Today I want to share with you guys how I built my own portfolio website to help me land a remote web developer job. So the aim of this portfolio was to show a little bit about who I am and also showcase a very select few of the projects that I've worked on. So let's take a look at how this actually looks. So this is the homepage here and it's very clean and I didn't want to have too much information being shown to the user at one time and also it would make it harder to maintain as it kind of grows. So as you can see just a little bit about who I am right here and then when you scroll down you straight away see featured projects and it just has a few projects that I've worked on along with the footer down below. So this project is being built with Nuxt.js and what that is is basically another framework built on top of Vue.js. So let's take a look at how this was built. So the first thing when setting up a Nux project that you kind of have to configure is their config file. And a lot of stuff in here is just things like setting up kind of some SEO headers and meta descriptions. We also have some favicons and any kind of imports of some CSS and JavaScript files that we want. And if we keep scrolling down here, we also get to my main SCSS file. So this is where all my own styling is located. And then there's a few other plugins and whatnot that I import in here as well. So if we take a look at the SAS file, we can see here that I'm using Bootstrap and I'm importing the whole thing of Bootstrap. Probably don't need to actually import the whole thing considering I'm only using a few select kind of components out of the whole project. But then what I do before that is I have some variables. And the thing about this file, if we open it up here, is I'm kind of overriding the bootstrap uh, kind of code itself without actually kind of adding more code. So what I mean by that is I'm kind of changing the underlying code itself. So for example, we have the primary color here. So instead of the primary, which is normally a blue, I think it is, I've changed it to this kind of pinky color. The secondary I've changed to the blue and things like that. And I'm also able to add in other colors like primary dark, primary light, and things like that that I'll be using throughout the actual project itself. And the really nice thing about using SAS files is I'm able to write everything really, really kind of efficiently. So if we take a look at some of the components here, we can have a look at, let's say, the footer file here, for example. So it's written as kind of this overall main container and then everything underneath is kind of contained, which makes it really, really nice and handy to build. I'm also able to use all these variables that I have defined, which makes developing CSS really, really nice and efficient. And also means if I want to change anything, all I have to do is go back to, for example, the variables file, and I can change the color of, let's say, primary, to maybe if we want to change this to like a green, that means everywhere on the website will change to green, which makes changing anything really, really fast and efficient. So the way Nux projects are also configured is we have these layout files. So the default layout is this file here. So as we can see, we just have this main container fluid that everything is contained in. Then I have my navigation bar and then Nux, which is the actual kind of page content itself. Then I also have the footer and the scroll top. So that's everything here. If we go back to the website itself, we have kind of the header here at the top. We have the main section. Then when we scroll down, we have the footer and also the little kind of scroll to top button on the right. But if we go to any other pages, for example, the about page, we can also see that it's using the exact same template. So when I scroll down, we still have the footer and we also have this scroll to top button as well. Taking a look at what one of these components look like, this is the navigation file right here. So we can see nothing too special about this. It's just holding a bunch of links and kind of marked up in kind of just a regular bootstrap kind of way. It makes me feel so small, standing on my feet. One thing that makes this project a little special that I worked on is my use of images. And you can see them here. And the reason that there is so many of them is because I'm using WebP images. And the reason I'm using that is for people when they're on likes of Chrome, the actual file size is a lot lower, making things load a lot, lot faster. The only downside of that is it's not supported on every browser at the moment. So for example, if you're on Safari, on your mobile, kind of if you're on kind of iOS, it won't load the WebP images. So for that reason, we also have to have fallbacks of the likes of PNGs or JPEGs. But where possible, I have used WebP all the way. 
and it really makes everything loading on Chrome a lot, lot faster from just loading up the page itself to as well as, you know, when I move from page to page, the use of UJS is really, really fast going from page to page, especially in this project when I'm not really going from, you know, looking at APIs or loading data or anything like that. It's all very static. And um, when I load up a new page, all the images load up really, really fast, which is very, very nice. So if we actually take a look here at the live website. If I go to, for example, the home page, everything kind of loads pretty much instantly. And I'll even refresh the page here. Um, and as you can see, everything is loaded very, very fast. Even if I do a hard refresh here, everything is loading very fast. If I go to the about page, you can see it kind of snaps very fast and all the images here have loaded. Again, if we go to the work page, things have loaded instantly, which makes the whole experience of going from page to page very fast. And without that whole delay, it makes it really just the nicer user experience. So while Nuxt and the VJS kind of framework isn't overly required for building what I've shown you so far, it really comes in handy when I'm creating things like forms. So for example, on my contact form, I'm doing different things where I'm showing different information and I want to be able to hide it and not hide it depending on the state of the page itself. So as you can see here, I have my main form and it just takes in the name, email and a message. And then what happens is when it gets submitted, it runs this on submit method. So if we take a look at what the on submit method actually does, and that's it here. And all it does is it takes a reference to the form and submits it and that's all it does and as you can see kind of just submit is kind of a bit vague and you're kind of thinking okay where is it submitting to but the way the form has been designed is that when you create the form itself when you're defining it you're defining the whole process of the fields and also when it gets submitted where it's going to actually go to so if we scroll up here a little bit, we can look at the form object itself. So you can see I've just defined three different form elements. That's the name, email, and message. And I've also added a few other things if it was successful, if it failed, and if we're loading. So if we've sent the request off, but if we're waiting for some sort of response. If we open up the form class that I've defined here, as you can see, everything is kind of contained within this. So we have a method for data, which returns all the data from the actual form itself. We have a reset button, which is resetting all the data and clearing any errors that might exist. We also have the submit method, which I explained before, which is all containing where this form is actually going to submit to. And if that does end up being an error, we also have an errors class. And what this is doing is handling all the different errors for the form itself. So we can have different fields or different methods here that we can use. So for example, we have record, which will record a new error for that field. We've got clear, which will clear the error for the field. We also have get one if you want to get a specific field error. And we also have another one of get, we have has. So we have a method that checks to see, does this field have an error? And if it does, we'll do something. If it doesn't, do something else. So that's pretty much how I built my very own portfolio website. As you can see, it is a little bit advanced, but there's not too much complexity there to it. It's really just a way of smart thinking and being able to efficiently make your designs into reality through code. My name has been Ryan, and thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions, hit me up in the comments below. Love to hear your thoughts on the process and if there's anything you would change to make it even better. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys in another video. See ya.